Good morning. Welcome to our online worship service of Kitsap Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. I invite you to follow along in the order of service. We will put the link in the chat. Whoever you are and wherever you have come from, for this hour, we are one gathered congregation and all are welcome. My name is Ed Woods. I am presently the chair of KUUF Building and Grounds Committee and a member of the ongoing forward, of the going forward task force. Our worship leader this morning is our own beloved minister, the Reverend Jessica Starr Rockers. I'd like to welcome any visitors. Please introduce, introduce yourselves in our chat box. We welcome more interaction with all during our after service Zoom coffee hour. The link for our coffee hour will go into the chat next. You will need to use the password coffee, that's with a capital C, to be admitted to the coffee hour. The announcements are available on our webpage, www.com. 
KUUF.org of our weekly email newsletter, The Candle. We would like to start today by acknowledging that the land on which we all live is the Aboriginal territory of the Suquamish, the Sklalem, and the Skokomish people. They have lived in harmony with the lands and waterways along Washington Central Salish Sea for thousands of years. These tribes still live here and protect the land and waters of their ancestors for future generations as promised by the Point Elliott Treaty of 1855. Now, please enjoy Alina Hemingway, Mike Menefee, and Brian Kenny singing and playing our call to worship number 1011, Return Again. Return again, return again, return to the home of your soul. Return to who you are, return to what you Now, please join me in lighting our chalice. If you have your own chalice or candle at home, please light it as we say these words. We light this chalice as a symbol of our free faith. We light this chalice to remember the miracle of the oil that burned for eight days. We light this chalice to mark the nights of midwinter we light this chalice as we wait for the sun to return. And now it is time to light our Advent candles. Though we are honoring Hanukkah today, we are also continuing our celebration of Advent the lighting of the Advent tree is a fellowship tradition started by one of our beloved ancestors, Elizabeth Bondi, who brought it to us from her childhood in Germany. Each week until Christmas, we will light a new candle on the Advent tree along with each of the preceding candles. The first candle represents hope, the second represents peace, the third represents joy, and then the last candle, our Christmas Eve candle, represents love. And today, we light anew our second candle. So we have our first candle of hope, and now our second candle of peace. We light this candle as a symbol of our longing for peace. We bring our hope into the world when we practice peacemaking. Our caring community aspires to be a source of freedom from violence and exclusion. May we become the ones we are waiting for. Together, may we strive to create a lasting peace. Please join in singing our opening hymn, 
Soon the day will arrive, number 146 in the gray hymnal. This hymn is also known by the words, wait and see. The lyrics will appear on your screen. Please join me in the spoken affirmation. The words will appear on your screen. We, as a caring community, seeking life's deeper meanings, we value diversity and affirm the worth of all living things. We strive to speak truth in love, to act for justice, to grow in spirit, and to care for the earth. We celebrate with open hearts and minds the creative power that sustains and transforms us. Now is the time for our morning offering. If you would like to donate electronically, please click on the PayPal.me PayPal .me link in the chat. You may then email admin at KUUF.org to let us know if your donation is for one, the general fund, two, the minister's discretionary fund to help our members in need, or three, our monthly charitable giving recipient for the month of December, Planned Parenthood. You may also send a check to the address on the screen. Please write in the memo line to which of the funds your offering should go. If this is your first time at KUUF, you are our guest, so there is no need to contribute. Let there be an offering to strengthen and sustain our community, which is sacred to so many of us.
Well, good morning, everyone. It is time for our children's story. So I invite the young and the young at heart to scooch a little bit closer to the screen. Last night was the third night of Hanukkah. And so today we're hearing a Hanukkah story. The story of the miracle mitzvah moose. And one of the stars of this story is right here with me today. I have well, Liam now has the miracle mitzvah moose. So let me share our story. And I'm actually gonna share the storybook so you can see the pictures. So hopefully you can see that. The miracle mitzvah moose. So let me move it slightly, okay. Abby stepped into the cold, stark house. It reminded her of a cabin. I hate it here. Why can't we go back home? She whined, throwing a stuffed moose onto the floor. Abby's mom picked up Moosey. This is our new home now. Tonight is the first night of Hanukkah. Let's find our menorah and make latkes. Before sunset, Abby's mom rummaged through a pile of boxes in the living room and found one marked Hanukkah. She pulled out a blue tablecloth. Abby and her mom quickly unwrapped the cloth and heard something crash. Abby grabbed a broken ceramic menorah branch. She burst into tears. This is the worst Hanukkah ever, she cried and rushed to her room. Abby stared at the snow falling outside her window. She wished she could float away like the drifting flakes from this dreary cold place. A soft tap interrupted her thoughts. Her mom sat next to her. We'll get another menorah tomorrow. Won't be the same as grandpapa's. It won't, but we can make it special, her mom replied. She followed Abby's gaze to the bleached backdrop of their backyard. Look, Abby, her mom said, pointing to a broad deer-like creature. Grand twigs sprouted from its head and cocoa eyes pierced through the curtain of snow. What's that, Abby asked. It's a moose, her mom answered. A real moose? The moose slowly inched through the snow towards them. Thick chocolate fur draped his body. Bits of snow clung to the tips of his majestic antlers. Sensing someone near, the moose turned its head. Intense eyes peered directly at Abby. It stood so close that Abby and her mom could see puffs of air escaping from its nostrils. Crunch, crunch, crunch. The moose advanced, never losing eye contact with the little girl. Suddenly, the moonlight struck one branch of the moose's antlers. A brilliant glow brightened the base of the antler. Gradually, the beam moved up the trunk and illuminated more of the antler. Higher and higher it crept until it reached the tip. Pop, the peak glittered and twinkled like a sparkling diamond. Mommy, it looks like a menorah. You're right, Abby, and tonight is the first night of Hanukkah. I think it's a message reminding us of the meaning of Hanukkah, her mom said. The miracle of the oil lasting eight days, Abby questioned. Yes, I think the moose is our miracle. And when we receive miracles, we should show our appreciation. How do we show our appreciation? One way is doing a mitzvah or a good deed. When we help or give to others who don't have as much, we are rewarded. We get a present, Abby asked. Sometimes, but more importantly, it makes us feel good. What mitzvah can I do, mommy? Let's make a list. After her mommy left, Abby gathered her dirty clothes and placed them in the washing machine. She cautiously poured in soap the way she'd seen her mommy do it many times before. Then she pushed the start button. Mommy would be so proud of her mitzvah. The next morning, Abby awoke and rushed to her window. The miracle moose was gone. Moosey was perched on top of a small present. Abby opened the box to find a sparkly bracelet. Abby raced down the hall. Mommy, look what Moosey left me. Today, I wanna to donate some of my toys for kids that don't have any. 
What a marvelous idea, her mom replied. After breakfast, Abby went to her room and sorted her toys. What would she give away? She liked them all. She decided upon three books, a stuffed rabbit, and a puzzle. At the donation center, Abby had second thoughts. Then she saw a little boy pick up Fluffy the bunny. The boy whispered something in Fluffy's ear. Abby knew Fluffy would have a good home, and her heart felt the warm glow her mother had talked about. Before going to bed, Abby glanced out her bedroom window and a sparkle caught her eye. The moose had returned. She gazed at the moose and their eyes locked again. Suddenly, two branches of the antler filled with light. The ray traveled up the trunk, illuminating one section at a time. The light stopped at the tips and shimmered and glistened against the milky background. Smiling, Abby climbed into bed and drifted off to sleep. When Abby woke up, she told her mom about the moose's return. That's when she saw Moosey on top of the kitchen table. An envelope rested between him. Abby opened the envelope to find a poem. Yesterday, you showed the opposite of greed by giving to those in need. Here is a little treat, something sweet for you to eat. Abby reached inside and pulled out the gift certificate to Polar Ice, her favorite ice cream parlor. Yippee! Once again, the moose returned, but this time with three glowing antlers reflecting in the night sky. For the remaining five days, Abby continued with good deeds, and each night her miracle moose presented her with a very special menorah. She would wake up to find Moosey in a different part of the house with a personalized note and gift. On the eighth night fighting sleep, Abby watched the moose. Eight antler tips glowed in the blackness. She wanted to keep this picture in her mind to remember all year long. Abby's miracle mitzvah moose continued to emerge from time to time, but the radiant twinkling antlers did not appear. While Abby would always miss the warm sunsets of her old home, she could enjoy the marvels of this new snowy wonderland. And perhaps another miracle would return next Hanukkah. And that is our story. What a great story. And this is the miracle mitzvah moose that we've got with us today. Thank you, Liam, for holding him. Hanukkah continues tonight until its last night, Thursday night. So maybe this week during Hanukkah, you can think about how you can show your appreciation for all of your blessings and what mitzvahs you might be able to do and how you might let your light this week, like the lights of the menorah, shine brighter and brighter every day like we have been trying to do with our song, our This Little Light of Mine, which we sing. So now I invite you to sing along with me and Liam and William, the song we sing every week. As we think this time of year about letting our lights shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. All through the dark. All through the dark. I'm gonna let it shine. All through the dark. I'm gonna let it shine. All through the dark. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine for you and for me, for you and for me. I'm gonna let it shine for you and for me. I'm gonna let it shine for you and for me. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. 
today, but I can feel your lights shining. My heart is brighter. And now is the time in our service for our joys and our sorrows. Though we are physically distanced from one another, our hearts and our spirits remain connected. When shared together, our joys are amplified and our sorrows are lessened. If you have a personal joy or sorrow to share, I invite you to write it in the chat this morning. I am feeling grateful this morning, on this gray morning, a joy for the lights of the candles, the light of our chalice, the light of our Advent tree that I love. That is my joy this morning and the light of everybody who is singing and sharing their light with me and with us. Bonner shares grateful and joy to have taken part in KUUF's food drive yesterday. Vicki shares, I have a dear friend in a long-term care facility who has been diagnosed with COVID. Vicki, our heart goes out to you. Jane, joy, oh, this is from Bob. Joy that my mom is in heaven. Sorrow that she is not here. Bob and Jane, our hearts are with you during your time of loss. Chris shares joy for the music of Christmas rain. We agree, that's a beautiful sound, isn't it? Melinda shares, my mom, Linda, lost her canine companion of 11 years. Her little dog couldn't have been more loved. We're holding Linda in our heart today. Liz has a concern for my mom who was exposed to COVID-19 this week by a therapist holding your mom in the light today, Liz. Owen is grateful for inflatable holiday yard decorations, especially holiday Yoda and gingerbread people. We saw a holiday Yoda recently too, and we loved it. We're sharing that with you. Morgan has a sorrow that COVID is keeping us away from visiting places this Christmas. Morgan, we're sharing in that sorrow with you. Joy for the mitzvahs of all who contributed to the success of the first week of KUUF's food drive for Bremerton Food Line. Isn't that true? Thank you. Missing Erin. She doesn't want to come outside in the cold and we can't go inside her group home. Our hearts are with you, Bill and Terry. Bonner has been stricken with the Holy Day spirit unlike anything in the past three decades. He's been confused by it, yet still welcomes it. What a joy. So glad that you caught the spirit this year, Bonner. Alan, joy for yesterday's beautiful sun and the fun we had filming our solstice videos. I'm so glad. How wonderful. 
Ginny Joy for the beauty of the season. Thanks to Nathaniel and Jacob for the gingerbread house, which was delivered after the auction. How wonderful. I wanna share a sorrow um, that was sent to me this week too through my email from the family of Stonechild Chief Stick, whose aunt um, is in the hospital and is um, suffering. Her name is Janet and they asked for prayers from our community for Janet uh, Stonechild's aunt. So our hearts and our prayers go out to them as well today. Well, thank you everyone for sharing. May you who shared this morning feel the love of this community surrounding you and holding you close. And for all those whose sorrow or joy is too tender to share, our hearts are with you. Oh, we have a couple more coming in. I'm gonna read them. Gratitude for medical workers, gratitude for animals and animal spirit, joy for Zoom meetings to connect with people, praise for Thursday group on communication in Fort Townsend. Thank you. And sorrow from Ginny for the death of our future daughter-in-law's grandfather in Japan. So sorry for that loss in your family. May the spirit of life and love bring peace to us all. Amen. Blessed be. We light these lights for the instigators and the refusers, the obstinate and unyielding, for the ones who kept marching, the ones who tended the fires, the ones who would not bow down. We light these lights for the sparks that guide us on through the gentle night, for the darkness that swaddles us in its soft embrace until the moment we inevitably emerge into life renewed. We light these lights for the spirit of resilience that remains after our strength has ebbed away, for the steadfast knowledge even as the bullets echo repeatedly off bodies lying in the streets, that the impunity of the powerful cannot last forever. These lights we light tonight will never be used for any other purpose but to proclaim the miracle of this truth it is not by might nor by cruelty, but by a love that burns relentlessly that this broken world will be redeemed.
Well, we heard during our children's story today, the story of the Miracle Mitzvah Moose. The family had recently moved to a new home and discovered their menorah was broken. And so the magical moose came and its antlers lit up like the lights of a menorah to help the family feel more at home and to celebrate Hanukkah. Now you may have noticed for this service, we haven't lit the menorah even though we're honoring the celebration of Hanukkah, Festival of Lights. And that's because I'm not Jewish. But if you are Jewish, and next year you would like to light the lights of the menorah as part of our Hanukkah celebration, I would love to invite you to do that. It is a fine line between appreciation and appropriation. And I personally don't want to practice any religious ritual that isn't mine to practice. But I did want to honor Hanukkah this year because it is part of our religious heritage as Unitarian Universalists. And it is a holiday that many UUs celebrate across the country. And as part of our commitment to the beloved community and being a pluralistic faith, it is good for us to honor Hanukkah among our winter celebrations, because it is not a Jewish Christmas. It is its own distinct holiday. And it's important for us to try to understand the story. Hanukkah is actually considered a minor Jewish festival, but it has become more popular as other winter holidays have become more popular, especially as it celebrates lights 
and Miracles, which is the theme this time of year across religious traditions. Hanukkah doesn't appear in the Torah, which is the Hebrew Bible, but it does appear in the Talmud, which is an ancient rabbinic text reflecting on the Torah. And it includes teachings and stories that are central to the practical application of religion in Jewish life. The Hanukkah story originates from two texts known as the Books of the Maccabees. The Maccabees were a band of Jewish rebels who were fighting against not just religious oppression, but the genocide of the Jewish people. In the year 168 BC, the Syrian armies of the Greek king Antiochus Epiphanes desecrated the Jewish temple in Jerusalem they erected a statue of the Greek god Zeus, and they sacrificed a pig on an altar of incense. Antiochus attempted to abolish Judaism and outlawed all of its religious observances, and Jewish people were forced to convert to paganism or be killed. But the Jewish people fought back, led by a family called the Maccabees, and they reclaimed their holy temple. The word Hanukkah means dedication, and this festival originated as a celebration of the liberation of the Jewish people from oppression, as well as the rededication and purification of the Jewish temple. In modern times, it has become an opportunity for the Jewish community in North America, in the midst of a dominant culture that observes Christmas, to celebrate one's Jewish faith, to claim one's Jewish identity, and to keep the flame of Jewish tradition alive. There were many miracles that accompanied the liberation of the Jewish people from Greek oppression, but there is one particular miracle around which the celebration of Hanukkah revolves, the miracle of the oil. The Union for Reform Judaism writes, originally the eight day holiday was intended to parallel the eight-day festival of Sukkot, which happens in the fall. It's a sort of harvest festival. The books of the Maccabees made no mention of the legend concerning a small jar of oil that unexpectedly lasted for eight days. Only centuries after the Maccabees' defeat of the Greek Syrian armies did the story of the jar of oil, which has come to be associated with Hanukkah, appear in the Talmud. According to the legend, when the Maccabees entered the temple and began to reclaim it from the Greeks, they immediately relit the Nair Tamid. This is the eternal light which burned constantly in the temple, symbolizing God's omnipresence. In the temple, they found a single jar of oil, which was sufficient for only one day. The messenger who was sent to secure additional oil took eight days to complete his mission. But miraculously, the single jar of oil continued to burn until his return. The rabbis of the Talmud attributed the eight days of Hanukkah to the miracle of this single jar of oil. The menorah, of course, is the most visible symbol of Hanukkah. Rabbi Yeshel Eckstein writes, its origins can be traced back to the construction of the tabernacle when God gave Moses specific instructions for designing a lampstand or candelabra. The menorahs today follow those instructions with one exception. While the biblical commandment calls for a seven branch menorah, the Hanukkah menorah has nine branches, eight symbolizing the eight days of the holiday and a shamash or servant candle used to light the others. In lighting the menorah, precise instructions are followed. On the first night of Hanukkah, one candle is placed at the far right branch of the menorah. The shamash is lit and blessings are recited, thanking God for performing miracles for our ancestors and for ourselves. After reciting the blessings, the servant candle is used to light the first candle and the shamash is returned to its special holder. This is followed every day, increasing by one candle until all nine candles are lit from right to left. During each night of Hanukkah, the menorah is placed by a window 
so that passers-by can be reminded of the miracle of the holiday. But there was debate by rabbinic scholars, the house of Shammai and the house of Hillel, on whether on the first night of Hanukkah, the menorah should start with all the candles lit and then each night light one less candle as determined by the house of Shammai, Shammai or whether it should begin with one candle lit and then each night an additional candle until all are lit as argued by the house of Hillel. Obviously the ritual as determined by the house of Hillel was the one that was adopted. But let's consider the difference between these two interpretations. According to Rabbi Menachem Feldman, Shammai says, on the first night of Hanukkah, you must kindle all your lights as you need every ounce of energy to fight the darkness outside. But here's the good news. Tomorrow, it will be easier. You weakened the evil on the first night so there is less of it on the second. Hence, all you need on the second night is seven lights. Eventually, you will rid yourself of the darkness and you won't need any light with which to fight it. Hillel says, forget the evil. Perhaps in temple times, we had the spiritual strength to battle the darkness head on, but now we need a new strategy. We need to focus on positive action. Don't worry about the darkness. Just take one small step in the right direction. Just light one small candle. No big deal, anyone can do it. The key, however, is that tomorrow you add one more light, small but consistent growth. Before you know it, your menorah will be full. And so too, in our own lives, with our own personal struggles, Making small, manageable changes can add up to a great deal of goodness and light. This focus on the positive and the small but mighty steps towards significant change not only reflects the modern expression of the celebration of Hanukkah, but it is often how modern people in general engage with liberation and resistance. We focus on increasing what is good in ourselves and in the world. When we see hate or someone directs hate toward us, our instinct is to ignore it. Focus on spreading the light. Michelle Obama summed it up perfectly. When they go low, we go high. And this is a critical part of personal and communal liberation. But this week during Hanukkah, I've been thinking about the house of Shammai and what it means to fight evil. This past week on Wednesday, right before the first night of Hanukkah, the Anne Frank Human Rights Memorial in Boise, Idaho was desecrated by Nazi symbols and hate. Underneath images of swastikas were written the words, we are everywhere. I can imagine the Jewish community in Boise and all around the country felt like they could have used all of the lights of the menorah on that first day, all the light to fight the evil and darkness. Because though small movements toward progress have been made, the struggle for liberation continues. It is a struggle that the Jewish people have fought and endured throughout centuries. And the truth is that hate has not yet been weakened. We know it is everywhere. But so are we and all of those who will rise up against it. And while Hanukkah is joyful and a time to celebrate Jewish tradition and identity, as we witness to the light growing brighter each day, we should remember that the miracle of the oil was preceded by the fight for liberation, a battle led by rebels against those in power against those who promoted evil and hate. And to have lasting freedom from oppression, we must have both the willingness to fight as well as the commitment to small everyday acts that bring joy and goodness. We need all of this to make real lasting change. And here's the thing, both of the proposed methods of lighting the menorah 
just like our often competing approaches to sustained justice and liberation, they have one thing in common, a servant candle, the shamash. The job of this candle is to pass the flame to the other candles, spread the light. That's its only job. No matter what form our resistance takes, we must always be spreading the light of love. As Judy Bressler writes in her poem, Servant Candle, a candle alone is a small thing, but one candle can light another and see how its own light increases as it gives flame to another. The miracle of Hanukkah is the miracle of the oil, but it is also the miracle of a small community overcoming impossible odds together. It is the miracle of hope in the darkest of times. It is the miracle of light itself. As the days grow shorter this week and the darkness continues to increase, may we remember the miracle of the light. In the face of hate and persecution, let us remember that all paths toward liberation require us to trust that to grow the light, we have to give it away. There's no use in hoarding it. That's not what it's for. Because this light is the eternal light, the light of hope, the light of the holy, the light of love, which lives inside each of us and which can never be extinguished.
I now invite you to set an intention and choose your word for the week ahead. This is the last week before we celebrate solstice and the light returning. And so our intentions this week can um, focus on getting through uh, these last days of increasing darkness, focusing on our light. You can choose a word or phrase, and if you feel called to, put it in the chat, and I will read them aloud. Bonner wrote, loving mentoring, honoring, relax, hmm. setting boundaries, seek stillness, understanding, giving, recoup, healing love and joy, connections, mitzvah, appreciate Christmas lights, Reconciliation, grace, sit quietly, be playful and be a mentor for peace, <laughs> no kvetching, love, be a light and embrace the darkness. Be a light and embrace the darkness. Well, thank you everyone for sharing. Now let us sing together our closing hymn, number 221, Light One Candle. Light one candle for the Maccabee children With thanks that their light didn't die Light one candle for the pain they endured When the right to exist was denied Light one candle for the terrible sacrifice Justice and freedom demand But light one candle for the wisdom to know when the peacemaker's time is at hand Oh, let the light go out It's lasted for so many years Oh, let the light go out Let it shine through our love and our tears Light one candle for the strength that we need to never become our own foe light one candle for those who are suffering pain we learned so long ago light one candle for all we believe in that anger not tear us apart and light one candle to find us together with peace as a song in our hearts
What is the memory that's valued so highly that we keep it alive in that flame? What's the commitment to those who have died that we cry out they've not died in vain? We have come this far, always believing that goodness would somehow prevail. Thank you everyone for being here today. Please join us after this for coffee hour. A live link will appear in the chat. Great, and you can click on the link in the chat. It'll take you right to coffee hour in just a moment. And the password is coffee with a capital C. And the question for our small groups during coffee hour is how will you keep the light alive this week in yourself and in others? After service today, we have a new to KUUF gathering. So if you're new and would like to hear more about our community and Unitarian Universalism, I invite you to attend that right after the service. The link will appear in the chat as well. And then don't forget, we're still collecting food and money for Bremerton Food Line for our holiday food drive. So we'll be collecting at the fellowship again on this coming Friday and then in the community on Saturday at a location yet to be determined. So keep an eye out in your email for that information. And now let us extinguish our chalices. Though we extinguish this flame, the light of truth and the warmth of community and the fire of commitment still burns inside of us. May we spread this truth, this warmth, and this light, knowing that the flame is not diminished when we give it away. It only grows stronger. Amen. Ashe. May it be so.